Bezat Hashem. We're so happy. We're here. We made it. Can you imagine? In such holy days, also to find yourself serving Hashem, also being holy and also being with Hashem. Well, it's a very big thing for a person to find a way how to be close to the Creator. And there's a problem when you check on ways how to get from one place to the other. So he tells you, start, take right, take left. It's very easy with you. Google Maps, the same. Very easy, very simple. Take right in 100 feet, take left, and then go straight. Like nothing. You just need to follow the... the but when you want to come closer to the Creator, when you try to, to Google it in your life, so you open one book and that book tells you you must learn. And the second book tells you the way that you're learning is so... You need to find the right way how to learn. It's very precise. You need to learn in a way that will fulfill that obligation of learning. And great. And then... You read another book and that book contradicts the first one and gives you other ways and explanations and then suddenly your eyes been opened, someone else is talking about a whole other concept in Judaism and tells you, hey, you must connect yourself to the prayer and you say, okay, great, and someone else come and you must follow the Shulchan Aruch and okay, now that's already too much for me, like, what are you talking about? Shulchan Aruch, great. I want to keep the halakha, the Jewish rules, great. I'm, okay, are you Sfaradi? Are you Ashkenazi? My father is Sfaradi, my mother she is Ashkenazi. I'm a bad shuba. What should I do? You're done. You finish. <laughs> you're, you're, you've just been, uh, been been rejected completely from every chance to, to hold on to something. And why? Because you're looking in the wrong direction. You're looking for external answers to your question. You have only one question because you live only in the present. A person falls to that fear of maybe I'm not doing right, maybe I'm not fulfilling my obligation. And he's got many, many evidence for that. Yesterday, my wife, she was angry. This morning, I was upset on my children. A few hours ago at work, I couldn't do my job right. And now I'm already late for my other thing. And now when I'm going, so I had this phone call that bothered me and I lost my way and I'm... And, and, so he's got so many issues, so many, so many situations, in, in intersections in life that he finds himself stuck with. So he thinks that he needs to have a solution for every problem. Now he needs to learn about Shalom Bayit and he needs to learn on educating his children and how to work on his temper, on his midot and how to succeed in, in, in work, and how to make money, and how to be loyal, and how to pray right, and how to learn right, and how to fix and organize his schedules that he won't miss other very important things. And, and what he's going to do about Uman, Rosh Hashanah soon, he needs to go already, and all of the Hasidim already bought their tickets. And so the main problem is that you have too many problems. That's the problem that your eyes are outside, that your heart is outside, and then you don't know how to find an answer to all of your questions. Because if you want to focus on Shalom Bayit, so it's going to take years and years to work on your Shalom Bayit. You want to work on, on, on how to make money. Someone said a few days ago, I heard a person that said, he said, even a success of, of one moment, a person that made it like in a, in a second, Usually it takes 20 years of hard work to prepare yourself for that success. Of that surprise, amazing success of one moment, but after at least 20 years of, of big effort and preparation and building the vessels, the, the, 
to, to have that success, to deal with that success. Because else, you had millionaires that lost everything in, in, in a week, in a month, in a year. They, they didn't know how to handle money, they didn't know how to handle the bounty. Also people that were holy in, 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 in Torah and learning and few five first years of their learning the people thought, oh, we had such amazing expectations from them and after a while they become medium and after it you saw they became even lower than that and like worthless in the end because they couldn't, they didn't have the vessel. So when a person wants to work on one issue in his life so he needs to dedicate his life to that thing. Now, how he going to deal with the fact that he's got so many issues, wife, children, work, midot, future, learning, praying, following Shulchan Aruch, learning all the Jewish rules, millions of, of, of things that a person needs to take care of, his car, like he, buying shoes, buying uh, clothing for all of the family, winter, everything is, is, is huge. So. How are you going to deal with all of those things? You cannot. It's impossible. But only because that your mindset is outside. You're not focusing on the key. If you're going to heal yourself, you're going to be healthy in all of those situations. If you're going to come with the right approach, if you're going to work on yourself in the right way, when you'll meet your wife, you're going to be a nice person. You, things are going to go smoother. You're going to work on yourself, you're going to meet your children, life's going to go smoother, easier, things going to get better and better. You're going to have to work on yourself if you're going to have the right approach, the right understanding about your purpose, about who that you are, you will come much calmer and more relaxed and it will be easier for you to work, financials, economic people, relationship at work, partnerships, business, my so money, all of those questions won't be a question anymore if you will be aware to the voice of your heart. And when I'm saying the voice of your heart, I'm talking much higher than the physical heart. You're not talking about some feeling that a person got inside. Okay, I feel that I'm going to make it and now he's going and investing money and in the end it's all falling and he's falling with it and, and all of his future and he lost his house and it's not the right way. Again, to follow your heart, it's like that a person understand that he's got, for an example, when you have a phone. So that phone is a tool for you to communicate with the world. But just to hold the phone in your pocket won't do no good. Only if you're going to dial, only if you're going to WhatsApp, only if you're going to send messages, only if you're going to be in touch, if you're going to answer calls, only if you're going to be in touch with all of your contacts, all of your world, will the world will be open for you by using the phone. So when we're saying the heart, we need to understand that the heart is channeling us with Hashem. Your heart is in your hand as a tool to hear the voice from heaven that will be sound through your heart. Like the, the verse is saying, Lecha amar libi, bakshu panai tamid. Hashem is saying, and Rashi is explaining on that, Lecha bishlichutcha. That the person got a heart, and that heart is a messenger of the Creator, to tell you, ask for the face of Hashem always. Your heart is the messenger of the Creator to tell you all of the time, look for Hashem. Hashem is using it to tell you, look for me. You must listen to the voice of your heart and the voice of your heart will always give you the right advice how to find Hashem. By reminding you that you should look for Him always. Bakshu panai tamid. Ask for my face always. Now what does it mean to look for the face of Hashem? Who is Hashem for you? That's the first question. Not who is Hashem for me. Today a student of mine asked me a question. She said, how can it be? I hear so many rabbis and all of them are saying, that if you do good, Hashem will reward you, you will receive many, many blessings. 
And if you're going to sin, you're going to do things against the will of Hashem, Hashem going to punish you. And they are establishing their words based on the curses, 98 curses that are written in the Torah. Not ignore that. But, and she's asking, from your speeches, and I might, she asked very carefully, maybe I don't understand what you're saying, but from what that I understand, you don't think like that. You're not, you're not going with that method that if you're doing wrong, Hashem will punish you. And she's right. So I answered to her, and I told her, first of all, we're not ignoring what that is written in the verses. We're going to answer that soon. But first of all, I must tell you something about myself. When I started, something that I mentioned so many times before in my classes, when I started my relationship with Hashem, my connection with Hashem, it was because that Hashem in Barach, the creator of the world, was revealing His presence to me. He was calling me in a way that was opening my eyes to recognize that there is a supervisor, that there is a creator to the creation. In the beginning, when I was young, I never thought about Hashem. I was not religious, I, was not, I didn't have no tradition, I was not observant, I was not keeping no Shabbat, no Kashrut, not at all. But still the creator was sending me messages that opened my eyes to see that there is something to it, that something is deeper here, there is a deeper meaning to the creation. If I'm thinking about something and a friend that is just passing the street in front of me tells me, hey, and he starts answering my thoughts, my questions in my mind. If I'm thinking about a person and he's calling me and like I'm picking up the phone and I can't believe what, I, what that goes on now, how can it be? When I recognize another situation like that, another coincidence and another coincidence, and then I realize those are not coincidence. There is a method. There is a personal supervision on me. And then you start thinking, <coughs> what is the hidden message? Okay, it works in a system. There is something. Something here is deeper, but what's the intention? And then you start realizing that all of those guidings, that all of those messengers are coming with a plan. They have a method. There is an idea. There is a concept that is hidden. There is a hint that someone behind the curtains is trying to, to, to pass and to let me know, to make me aware to his existence and then to his greatness, to his power. And when I'm finding myself suddenly praying to him, the best thing in the world is happening, and I'm being answered. And then I say, how can it be? You can buy a house without having money. You can buy a car without having money. You can do so many things without having the physical ability, the financial ability to do those things. You can be healed from, from sicknesses, from illnesses, that a person cannot recover from them. And things took place in my life. I saw those things with my eyes. And more than that, if a person achieves spiritual levels, he can start seeing things with his mind. Like divine spirit, like certain wisdom that comes straight from heaven. He can have answers to answer other people about their lives. He can feel and understand and sense certain things that regular people, random people in the streets, they, they will never going to know that. And he also can see things with his eyes. He can have visions, he can have dreams, things that are opening and, 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 and cleaning the path in front of him and clarifying for him exactly what he needs to do. I met once the righteous man, his name is the, the, the Bial Rebbe from Jerusalem, from, from Givat Shaul, I told you a few times about that. That amazing person told me things that only me and the Creator we knew. I was alone in the middle of the night, doing it by the dude, praying to Hashem, Literally alone in a cemetery, in a graveyard, in Bnei Brak, in the middle of the night, talking to Hashem. And three, four months after, I'm coming to meet with the Bial Rebbe. And he's telling me, remember that night that you were doing it with the dude in, that, in the graveyard in Bnei Brak, and you were talking to Hashem, and you remember that you said that thing and that thing, like, hey, 
Am I wired? What's going on? Checking if my tzitziot are wired. What's going on? That chil t'chelet is going very far. Like, what's going on? But can't argue with, with, with reality. I was there alone. I never mentioned that prayer to no one. And that prayer been answered and made wonders in the world. And that righteous man became aware to that somehow. Hashem told him that somehow. So if Hashem told that to him, means that there is a connection. Now, maybe you don't believe in yourself that you're also a vessel that can contain such kind of bounty that divine spirit will flow through you and that you're going to know answers to questions and like you're going to understand things that are from the world of beyond. And, and Okay, that's your lack of faith that is holding you back from reaching the truth. But me, that I started my tshuva from zero, from total zero, and I realized that Hashem Yitbarach was there with me. That's why I cannot say that my connection and my relationship with the Creator depends on how righteous I am, or strict I am, or which time in the morning I'm waking up to pray shachrit. If I pray nets, I'm going to be closer to Hashem. If I pray the ten. A.M. I'm going to be not so close, not as close. It didn't happen with me. What had happened with me is that Hashem Barach just revealed His loving kindness on me every day, more and more, with no connection to my function, to the way that I was functioning. Because when He started to open my eyes and to communicate with me and showing me signs and things in my life, I was not observant at all. I was not keeping Shabbat, I was not eating kosher, I was doing everything that is not allowed. I, I couldn't care less about religion. But I had a certain point of truth, and I think, and that is the answer to what that I said before, that that point of truth that I had was the vessel to, to be close to Hashem. And like that the verse is saying, that that the person that is lying cannot stand in front of Hashem and that the seal of the Creator is the seal of truth. So when you're holding Midat Ha'emet, when you're not lying to yourself, to people that are around you, to the Creator, and you're being honest, you're just being truthful, you're just being who that you are. You don't need to change. No, I pretend I'm righteous. No, I'm doing this. I'm no, that can be a lie. If now someone's going to come to you and going to ask you, Hey, do you want to be holy? Hey, do you want to be righteous? Do you want to guard your eyes? If you're going to say yes, you, you're lying to yourself. At least from my point of view. If I'm going to say yes now, just like that, yes, now it's a lie. Do you know what it means to be holy? The meaning of, of holiness, do you know what it's all about? What is Holiness is not to be clean. What is holiness? What is purity? What are we talking about? It means to be totally clean from all kinds of lust and desires, for an example. Are you... Do, so, is your answer the same? Stays the same? You sure? You don't want to have no desire, no pleasure from no desire, from nothing? Are you able to give up? On, on all pleasure that is physical. No more donuts, that's it. No more barbecues, no more wine, no more hard liquors. That's it. Are you sure that you're able to give up on all of that? If the answer is still no, so don't say yes on, yes, I want to be righteous, yes, I want to be pure. Don't lie. You want to guard your eyes? Yeah. Do you want your eyes to be holy and pure? Yes. Okay. Close them. Uh, too hard. So you're not up to it yet. It's not in your vessels yet. It's not in your ability yet. So why to say yes when its answer is really no? The answer really is no. Not yet. Do you want to want? That's a good question. Do you want to want to be righteous? Maybe. So maybe you should want to want to be righteous. It's even better. You can start working on your will to want to be righteous. That's a good point. Now you can say to Hashem, Hashem, look, for my side, I don't know, I, 
Holiness, I don't know, what's that? But I think I heard, I learned that it's good, that it's higher, that it's better, that I'm going to be rewarded on it, that I'm going to enjoy it, that in the end, in the bottom line, it's much, much better to be holy. So can you help me to start with my baby steps to follow your advice and to reach those places? Because I don't have no clue what are we talking about even. People desiring to convert. I want to be Jewish. I want to be Jewish. What are you talking about? What do you mean I want to be Jewish? Do you know what you're talking about? Are you trying to run away from your culture? You want to run away from your family? I want to make Aliyah. I want to live in the Holy Land of Israel. Great. Do you know what you're talking about? I don't mind. Go. Enjoy. Do it. The best. But I'm asking you, do you understand what are you talking about when you're saying I want to make Aliyah? Do you deal with all of the obstacles, with all of the things? Maybe Hashem wants you to stay here for another week, for another month, for another year, and to build yourself and just prepare yourself a little bit more before you're going to jump to such deep water. I want to convert. Why? I'm asking you, why you want to convert? Why do you need to convert? You want to serve Hashem? Okay, so what's the problem? Serve Hashem. What can't you do? What can't you do when you're not a convert, when you're not Jewish? What can't you do? You cannot pray, you cannot learn, you cannot, you cannot eat kosher, you, you cannot keep Shabbat. 99.9 .9 of the rules of Shabbat you can keep. One small tiny thing in every Shabbat you cannot do. Okay, what's the problem? It's not, a, it's not such a big deal. If you really want to be close to Hashem, what is in the world that will make you closer to Him? Then simple prayer. Talk to him. Now you want to be close to him? Talk to him. Tell him, hi. How are you doing? We're here. Are we fine? Everything is okay? Are we okay, Hashem? Are we okay? Are you upset? Something is wrong? Have I done something wrong today? Please remind me. Oh, Hashem. Right. Thank you. Thank you for reminding me. Please, Hashem, I'm sorry. I messed up. You're right. I wasn't supposed to do that thing. Please help me. Are we okay now? Can I continue? Can I talk to you? I have some requests. There's something I want to do. That's it. I have a friend. That friend is a convert. Amazing person. He came from Puerto Rico to United States. He converted. He now lives in Texas. He's got issues higher than the highest mountains of them all. But every time, every time, that he's opening his mouth and calling Hashem, he's being answered. Every time. And you're going to say, how come I'm finding myself praying for years on the same things and I'm not being answered? How many times, how many hours, how many weeks, how many years I'm praying and praying? I'm sorry. I, me, myself, in my life, I never experienced uh, disappointment from Hashem when I was doing the maximum that was required for my success. If I wanted to achieve something in my life and I was really giving all that I had to give, I was always being answered. But if I was just sitting and complaining on the fact that I am not being answered, so that's the recipe for failure. And I failed many times in that. In laziness, in, in, in finding excuses to why I'm not being answered, on blaming Hashem or blaming people, in why I'm not being answered. That's something I failed in many, many times. But the truth must be said, that in every situation that I really gave all that I had to that goal that I wanted to achieve, and I was praying, but I was also putting my heart into it, I was also putting the effort that was needed, I was never rejected. I was always being answered, always. So now, if you're finding yourself that you're praying and praying and praying and not being answered, I think that you need to check with yourself, what are you praying for? And if you're really dealing with what that you're asking, if you're really asking the right thing for you to, to receive, 
Maybe Hashem is saving you from something that you're not aware of. You can pray, Hashem, I want to make Aliyah, Hashem, I want to make Aliyah, I want to live in the Holy Land, I want to live in the Holy Land. And you can spend 20 years of your life begging and crying on daily basis to Hashem that you want to make Aliyah. Great. Amazing. Why I'm not being answered? 20 years every day, one hour I'm crying to Hashem, I want to live in Jerusalem, I want to cry in the Western world. Great. Never visit there even once in my life. Okay, great. Why I'm not being answered? Maybe there are things that you don't know. Maybe something can happen with your family that you're not aware of. Maybe the weather is not good for you. Me, for an example, when I'm in Israel, I have tons of allergies. When I'm here in the U.S., I never, I didn't have allergy even once. Something in, in the weather, something in the air over there makes me have allergies in Israel. Here, nothing. Zero. So it's not a reason to live in the U.S., but it's waking you up to understand that there are certain things that you're not aware of. Do you know what makes you healthy? Do you know what makes you happy? Do you know what makes you strong? Do you know what makes your mind think straight and clear? Do you know what will break you down? What will destroy your faith? Do you know all those things? No, you don't know. So maybe try to understand that life is much deeper than you think that they are. And if Hashem is not answering your request for 20 years or so, maybe there is a reason. Hashem will want to get married. Hashem will want to have children. Hashem will want to buy a house. What am I asking for? Simple things. Simple things. Do you know who you are? You want to get married. Do you know what you're able to do if you're going to be married? Maybe you can do horrible things. Maybe you're not ready. Maybe she's not ready. Maybe your wife, that wife that you're about to get married with, maybe she's, she needs more time. But she's your wife and she needs more time. We want to have children and we don't have. Do you know the secrets of lifetimes? Do you know what happened to you in a different lifetime? Do you know for sure what's going on with you? But they took my children away from me. But we now need to live separately. But now she divorced me. But now this, now that. Wait. Try to talk with the Creator with different glasses. Wear the glasses of truth and start being honest with Hashem. And now when you're going to pray like that, when you're going to discuss your situations with Hashem, Hashem is going to open your eyes to recognize the truth. If you will spend every day one hour on crying and complaining and saying and rebuking and arguing and fighting and asking and begging and whatever, and you're not demanding the truth, you're not going to know the truth. You're just going to stand and beg and cry and yearn and desire forever, but you're never going to experience the truth. Because the truth will be revealed to you only when you will ask for it. And not when you're going to ask to make Aliyah. Not when you're going to ask to learn Torah. You can ask to learn Torah. There is nothing bad with asking to learn Torah. But there are people that on them it's been written, Lo zakha naset lo samavet. That if that person have not purified himself enough and he will learn Torah, the Torah will become poison, lethal poison for him, and can kill him. How many people you know that they're going and learning Torah, and they don't have the tools to deal with what they're learning? And then they're coming back home and killing their families because they learned a new rule today. And she's not covering her head, and she's not modest enough, and the kids are not learning enough, and the house is not kosher enough, and the house needs to be like this and like that, and what's going on, and how come, and why me, and why her, and every, every kind of, of fire controls the house. And that's it. And it's a wreck. And why? Be brave. Say the truth. Why? If not because the, that poor guy went and learned Torah. But not because the, the Torah is wrong. Just because the dead guy don't have the vessels, the tools right now to know what to do with the Torah that he's learning. Maybe his rabbis are not really qualified to teach. 
Maybe he needs to focus on other things and Hashem is trying to hint him and to wake him up to understand that there are things that are more important, at least for you, at least for now. Maybe tomorrow you'll get the vessels, maybe in two years you'll have the ability, but maybe now you need to deal with other things that are not less important. For an example, working on your midot. To be more honest, to be more open, to share, to be able to listen, to care, to be sensitive, not to hurt no other people, other per people around you, not to insult no one. If you can come back from learning and the result of your learning is that you're getting arrogant and proud of yourself, full of yourself, and everyone else around you become to be so like low and, and downgraded for you, like they're zeros, they're bumps, they're all like lazy, and why she's not modest enough, and why he's not doing this, and that. something is wrong with you. She's doing the best that she can, she's trying, she's working, she... Maybe she doesn't understand. Maybe she doesn't get it fully, but if you're not, ex maybe you're not explaining it well enough. Maybe she never been taught. In relationship, it's, it's something very important to understand. If you want to bring your house to a certain level, you need to bring all of your house. Now, if you have a, a, a pile of sand or, or a pile of fruits and you want to pick them all up, you want to pick it out, you need to go to the bottom or else you're going to leave some fruits on the ground. If you want to take all of the sand, you need to pick it up from the bottom. You need to put your arms under it, your hands under it, and then to lift it. And if there are people around you that they cannot understand, you sat in the Beit Midrash, you went to learn, you heard classes for years, you were thinking about those issues, they've been cooked inside of you for years, but your wife, your children, they never thought about those things. Now you're going to come with your understandings, you're going to start, start slaughtering everyone around you, blaming them for not being as wise as you, or I don't know what you're thinking. You're just going to kill the only chance that they already had to come closer to Hashem. And now you're rejecting them. You're closing the gates of tshuva from them. Because that you're arrogant, because that you don't have patience, because that you can't wait, because you can't hold yourself back. And it's your mistake and it's your fault. So maybe now it's more important for you than to go and learn and to add more arrogance to your arrogance that already exists inside of you, unfortunately. To go and to humble yourself. How are you going to humble yourself? What is humbling me? You need to ask yourself, what really humbles me? What really makes me humble? Maybe when I'm not learning, maybe when I'm spending more time with my children, when maybe when I'm dealing with questions that I'm not willing to deal with. When someone is asking you, when someone is arguing with you on Hashem. Let's say now you meet a person and that person tells you, I don't believe in Hashem. I don't believe. There is no Hashem. He doesn't believe. And now he starts giving you evidence and proof for that. No, you think that your success is from heaven. I tell you that your success is because that you woke up early in the morning. You think that you had a miracle. I tell you it's a coincidence. You'd... And he's starting to get sharper and sharper. He's getting stronger. And he brings strong evidence. What are you going to feel about an argument like that? It's your father. It's your mother. It's your wife. It's your husband. It's your children. It's your child. And he starts getting stronger and he's fighting back. He's got claims, he's got arguments, he's got proof, evidence for his assumptions. And you feel that it's wrong. You believe in Hashem. But that guy is getting stronger with, argument, with his arguments. What are you going to do now? If you're going to reject that argument, if you're going to cancel that conversation, you will not going to deal with your lack of faith. Maybe you're not as strong as you assumed. Maybe now the Creator is testing your faith to show you that your faith is also not as strong, even if you choose to stay religious. Religion. Religious. 
even if you choose to 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 stick to 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 the customs who said that your faith is strong who said that you believe in what that you do who said that you don't have anger inside of you bitterness inside of you who is saying that you're not functioning out of fear who is saying that you're not doing it from the wrong reasons no one only you, if you will be honest with yourself and gonna open your eyes, you're gonna realize that you are still weak, that you're not as strong as you claim to be presenting yourself as a strong person, as an observant person, as a religious person, as a frum person, as a very consistent person. Maybe you're not as strong. And Hashem Barak sent that person right now to wake you up, to see, to recognize your weaknesses, not because he wants to break your spirit, just because that he really wants you to start working on your faith. If your faith would be strong, you would find the answers to answer that guy that is arguing with you right now, that it can be your wife, it can be your child, it can be your parent, it can be a friend in the street or a partner to work. If you would really be strong in your faith, you would have that answer for him. You would tell him, no, listen. And you would give him a straight explanation that would solve all of his doubts. But he shaked your stability and shown to you that your faith is not as strong. You don't need to reject that conversation. You need to deal with your fears in honesty. And to go and to have a deep conversation with the Creator and to tell Him, you know, this morning I realized that I don't believe in you as much as I thought that I am, that I was. Can you help me? Can you stabilize my faith? Can you make my faith stronger? I want to count on you. At least I want to want to count on you. Please help me to count on you. Today I saw that I don't have faith, that I don't have hope. Please Hashem, give me hope. Please Hashem, that I won't back off, that I won't give up. Give me the tools, let me know how I'm going to connect myself to you. How I'm going to strengthen my faith. How I'm going to get stronger in my faith. How I'm going to trust in you, Hashem. I saw that so many times I prayed to you and I felt like I was never being answered. Hashem, can you please answer my prayers? Can you please give me an evidence to your existence? Those simple, honest requests will be answered. But all of those wise and clever prayers, I want to be righteous, I want to be pure, I want to complete my conversion, I want to complete my aliyah. I don't know. I hope they're going to be answered. But I still also hope that they are the right requests. I'm not sure that those are the right requests. I think that a person needs to go and search the foundations of his building. Need to check yourself. Where are you holding in faith? Check your pulse. Feel yourself. Where am I holding? Do I really count on Hashem? For my life experience, from what that I learned, what I've been taught, I saw that confidence is the vessel to contain the salvation, to, to be answered. And if you don't have confidence, you cannot be answered. So if you have not been answered yet, I suggest to work on your confidence. To go and how I'm going to work on my confidence if Hashem is not answering my prayers. Okay, go talk to Him about that. And like that Hashem is saying, you can test me on that. And I'm going to open the sky for you. And I'm going to bring down bounty that will be too much for you. That you won't know how to deal with such amounts of bounty. It depends in an honest relationship with yourself, with the Creator. Now there are those rabbis that are coming and preaching and teaching and telling everyone that if you're going to sin, you're going to be punished. And that if you're going to do something wrong, you, go, you don't know what's going to happen to you. It's true, it's written. But I never experienced that in my life. And I'm here serving Hashem for at least 20 years. And I never saw that happens. 
So I'm not telling you that it's wrong, just it's like a, a default plan. It's like like a parent that doesn't want to punish his children, but he must threaten on them once in a while. If you're not going to do this, I'm going to show you, I'm going to take everything that you have, I'm going to... But he will do, that parent, everything in his power not to execute, not to punish. He will do everything, he will threat, he will say, I'm not going to let you out, I'm not going to let you in, I'm not going to give you anymore, I'm going to take it from you, I'm going to buy, you're going to see what I'm going to... Worst thing that you can, that you can imagine, you don't know what I'm up to, you... Okay, <laughs> but the distance from saying those things and to really have the intention, uh, they're saying a dog that is barking is not a dog that is biting. If you want to, you, know, you don't need to be careful from people that are cursing and threatening, that's nonsense. If he would want to hit me, I would be on the ground already, I would be knocked down already. If he really would be dangerous, I would be down. He could kick me. He could smack me. I would be off. That's it. He would erase me. That was the wisdom of Moshe Rabbeinu to understand that. That when Hashem Barach told Moshe, the Creator told Moshe, Heref me many v'ashmidem, leave me alone for a moment, and I'm going to kill them all. Moshe realized, if I'm not going to hold... Him, if I'm not going to let him go, he won't do it. Moshe realized that. Moshe was smart. Hashem told him, leave me alone for a second and I'm going to kill them all. Moshe said, okay. It means that if I'm not going to back off, that if I'm not going to leave you alone for a second, I'm going to pray and I'm going to cry and I'm going to ask and I'm going to beg and I'm going to bring... Um, arguments to my requests and I'm gonna ask and beg more and more and more and I'm not gonna stop you're not gonna do anything and he read between the lines of Hashem so Hashem can say yes I'm gonna do this I'm gonna do that but come on I can see clearly that you are revealing your loving kindness on me in my life such an enormous love to me that is not dependent in my actions because you're showing the same love when I'm waking up at 11.30 as in the days that I woke up at 4. Not in the afternoon, in the morning. When you realize that the love of the Creator is an unconditional love, so that's it. You serve Him like a child, like a partner. You become friends with Him. That's partnership. It becomes partnership. You and Hashem. And then Hashem tells you, if you're going to make Kiddush, so you and I are going to complete the creation of the sixth day and going to enter Shabbat, the seventh day, together. And you're completing the vessel. You're creating the world. You? Who are you? You're nobody. You're nothing. And still Hashem gives you the power to do so much and to achieve such amazing things that are in the peak of the world. And only because that your heart is honest, only because that you really want to do good, and you care, and you try, and you pray, the only advice, only, 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 only advice is to listen to the voice that is speaking from within. It's the voice of the Creator that is telling you, look for my face always so now in every situation what that you need to do is to look for his face now the question on that is who is Hashem for you look for his face what 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 his face represent goodness kindness patience sensitivity love support wealth beauty health amazing things inspiring things <coughs> look for that Look for those good sparks in your life. Look for the, for the cause, for a purpose. Look for a goal. Look for something deep, for a deeper meaning. Where, when, in every situation. When you're with your wife, when you're with your children, when you're with your partners, when you're at work, when you're driving, when you're eating, when you're about to go to sleep. Look for a deeper meaning. 
Look for the purpose of you going to sleep now. Look for the purpose of you eating those donuts soaked with oil in Chanukah. Why, Hashem? Why? 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 <laughs> Why? <laughs> Look for the answer. <laughs> be careful, you might be answered. <laughs> maybe, you're not, maybe you're not ready to ask that question. <laughs> I'm giving up on my donuts, are you crazy? I understand. So be honest. And I'm going to tell you something that I told you again and again. And it's so important. What that you can achieve is something that no other person in the world can achieve. No one else can achieve what that you can achieve. The heights that you can reach by connecting your inner self cannot be described. No one can in the world can explain and describe for you what that you can achieve. No one. Because no one went in that ele elevator before. No one went in that channel before. It's yours. It's who that you are. You have your inner flame of fire. That's the candle of Hanukkah. That's the, the, the light of your soul. That's who that you are. You have that. It's yours. Now, if you're going to focus the flame of fire... The fire is, is coming from within. It's, it's like it's flaming from inside. You got that inside. You also got the outside. So now you need to count on the candle, on the, on the wick, on the, on the, on the wax, on, on, on the table, on the person, on people. On, on. Instead of focusing in your inside, in the inner source of heat, of holiness, of purity that you carry within. And when you're going to focus on that, when you're going to start working on reconnecting yourself to your spiritual essence, to who that you are spiritually, from the side of your soul, something that most of us almost not aware of, not aware to, don't know that it exists, heard about that concept. It's called Pnimiyuta Torah, it calls the light of your neshama, of your soul, it's called infinity, it calls uh, uh, many, many names. But most of people don't dare to close their eyes and to ask the right questions. But if you're going to dare to do that, now that's, uh, that's, that's amazing. That's amazing. You can climb in the in the stairs uh, that will, will will take you straight to to heaven. Sulam Yaakov, the letter of Yaakov Avinu. Angels are going up and down in that letter. It's an inner letter. It's inside of you. You're gonna close your eyes. You're gonna think. You're gonna you're gonna observe. You're gonna talk to the Creator. You open open your spiritual eye. Open the doors of your soul. Stop being physical all day long. Stop being physical. Stop thinking that, okay, now I'm going to read that book and I'm going to finish that book and I'm going to go and I'm going to catch that minyan and I'm going to make that kiddush and I'm going to eat from the leftovers of that righteous man, Shirayim, and I'm going to wear that till tchelet tzitzit and I'm going to pay $200 for it and I'm going Relax. It's also good. I'm not stopping you, but focus on the intention of your heart. Do it with the heart. Do it while being aware to the fact that the Creator is with you. Not He's over there and I need to fulfill my obligations. Not He's there and He's threatening me and who knows what's going to happen to me. No, nothing going to happen. Trust me. And if something's going to happen to you, I'm taking it on myself. I promise to you, to all of my loyal students, to all of the people that appreciate me and appreciate what that I'm doing in the world, I'm promising to you that now, in front of Hashem, Sefer Torah, 
if you are trying to do the best that you can, if now after trying to do good and you're not succeeding and you're failing, I'm taking it all on myself. It's not your fault anymore. I promise. Me. I did it. I'm not afraid. It's nonsense. It's shtuyot. Hashem couldn't care less when you're failing while trying to do the right thing. Hashem is angry? You think Hashem is angry? That's how you think Hashem is? That's who you think Hashem is? Now you see your child, and he's amazing. His will is is gorgeous, fantastic. He wants to do good. And oh, he broke that vessel. Will you care? Will you think about that? He tried, really, literally. You saw in his eyes that he had the passion to do good. Now he lost the hundred dollars that you gave him. He broke that book. He torn that, that, that paper. He lost it because of the exile. It's because of the difficulty of this lifetime. It's because of all the darkness of this world. It's not the child fall to blame. It's not your fault to blame. So stop being so critical about yourselves and resetting your mind to, to create an inner relationship with the Creator. Only through a simple conversation with your eyes closed, it's going to help you a lot. Just open your mind to the existence of the Creator with you. And you're going to see wonders. Your prayer is going to be answered once, one after the other. You're going to see that. One after the other. Just do it with truth. Look for the truth and you'll experience miracles. Those are days of miracles, of wonders. Thank you, thank you, thank you very much. Chazak Baruch. Now. I wanted to ask you please to help us, support us. We have a non-profit organization, Emuna Project Inc. Help us. You can help us through our website, through all of the uh, don- donuts buttons that we have all over the place. It's Hanukkah. Push the donut button and you're going to see wonders. And we're going to ship the donuts to your houses. And... Um, and you need to, to, to believe, I think, I'm offering to you uh, a big thing. It's an expanding family, the Amuna Project. Soon we're going to go to California, to another tour. We're going gonna to meet all of our friends again and meet new friends again as well. I really suggest for you to become partners with me. Some person told me, I'm afraid I won't be able to stare to look at you in the world to come. I told him why. He said, because you, I don't know what are you made of. I told him why. He said, you're not afraid to go to the lowest places of them all to, to rescue people. and Like nothing is, is catching. You're not catching. Like nothing is catched to you, attached to you. And it's true. The Gemara is saying on Talmidei Chachamim, on the real wise people, that they are made out of fire. They are the fire itself. You maybe can't see that. But when your mind is somewhere else, so you become something else. When your mind is with Hashem, you don't need to be afraid of, of no one. People don't have no existence anymore in their life. And again, like I'm telling you, it's... Every, every individual potential. It's every person's potential. Just you need to go with it all the way. You're going to have to. <laughs> Hashem is not going to leave you alone. It's not like you can get rid of him or something. He's, uh, he's, he's surrounding you. <laughs> Closing ring. May Hashem bless you all, that all your prayers will be answered. Amen. Thank you. In this world, in this period of time, we have a mission. What's the mission? The mission is only not to forget the Creator, to remember that it's all Him, never to fall in the trap of all of those coverings, of all of those husks.